Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. In this video I'm going to be building some modular trenches. This is nothing new and there are many other videos on YouTube about how to build trenches, but I wanted to build some, so this is my take. Another reason why I wanted to build this is because I wanted to experiment with creating different levels of playable terrain that can be dropped onto a flat gaming mat whilst keeping a degree of modularity to make any number of different configurations. If you're new here and you like these kind of videos then don't forget to subscribe and let YouTube know you appreciate this content by hitting the like button. I knew I couldn't just dive into this project and, and would need to do a little planning before I got started so I started drawing out a few of the shapes and playing around with some of the measurements. I came up with a plan of making 15 cm square tiles. This meant that I could fit them together and not have to deal with odd measurements. I drew everything out on a sheet of board and began cutting out all the pieces. To build up the sides of my trenches, I used up a bunch of XPS foam offcuts I'd saved from other projects. I glued up the walls of my trenches together with some PVA. Now there are many different types of trenches. Some are far more temporary and quickly built and others are more like sort of open tunnels. I went for something that would be more of a permanent structure and opted for concrete walls. For the sloping side pieces, I stacked all manner of offcuts, knowing that I could cut these back later on down the line. Now usually at this point, I would grab my hot wire cutter and carve foam very quickly and tell you guys that if you don't have a hot wire foam cutter, then you can also do this with a sharp knife. Today I'm actually just going to use my knife, because I actually want a rougher finish. Take care when using a sharp knife and Always pay attention to where the blade can cut, as accidents can and will happen. To neaten things up, I taped some sandpaper to my desk and used this as a fixed flat plane to straighten up any edges that were overhanging. I also made up little corner pieces to join up all the corner sections. Next came the flooring. I thought some coffee sticks would work nicely for planks. I have a huge bag of these that I ordered from Amazon ages ago. Now I knew I'd made lots of tiles and therefore would need many, many planks to cover all the floor. So the arduous task of cutting planks began. With a whole bunch of planks cut, I could begin flooring out my trenches some PVA and then lay each floorboard individually and yes before you ask this took a while I also needed a way for my brave combatants to be able to go up a level and face their foes so I made some ramps I chose ramps over stairs as Trying to place miniatures on stairs can be a bit tricky sometimes. They also had their floors added in the same way as the tiles. I also carved out some battle damage to some of the walls just to give a bit of character and history, as well as adding some visual interest. Wow, this project has really taken on a life of its own. What started as a simple trench idea has, has somehow grown into a labyrinth of tunnels. Okay, well, I'm here now. Might as well run with it. I made up some ground texture paste by mixing up some PVA, glue, some dirt from the garden, some sawdust, and a bit of sand. To this I add some chopped cocoa fiber, some water, some brown and gray paint. Feel free to experiment with your own combinations of things you can add. As long as you have a good dose of PVA, it will pretty much hold together. I then spread this out over the uppermost part of my trench walls. 
I know this looks gross, but sometimes you need to get your hands dirty, so to speak. And I recommend putting something down before you get really messy, unlike I have done here, and started working right away on my nice cutting mat and covered it in texture paste. And then, if I already didn't have enough to deal with, I also decided to make a kind of no man's land transition, an open slope where many have fallen. So I grabbed another piece of board and this time used some three inch polystyrene that I had kicking around. I just wanted mass, so I wasn't going to use my nice XPS foam for this. I hate working with polystyrene because of all the little white balls that just get everywhere, but that's life, I guess. I cut away a gentle slope with a sharp knife and then using a cook's blowtorch, I just gave everything a light singe. This slightly melts the foam, softening some of the harder edges. I also melted in a couple of small craters from a previous bombardment. And just like the trench walls, I mixed up some ground texture paste and began to spread this over the foam. And while this was drying, I painted over all the walls with some Mod Podge just to seal it and give it some protection. Because this dries clear, I could just grab a bigger brush and make short work of each wall. The only problem was there was a lot of wall. As with everything in life, there is a beginning, a middle and an end. You start at one end and plough your way through and before you know it, the task is done. And as if painting each face with sealer wasn't enough, I mixed up a concrete lip and colour and painted all the walls all over again. No shortcuts here, just apply an even coat to everything. And while I had some paint out, I also gave all the woodwork a messy brown wash to, to give the floorboards an aged look. And to neaten up some of the edges and smooth the transition between wood and concrete, I ran little beads of PVA down the edges and then sprinkled some dirt into this. Great, I have the basics of my trenches down, but I felt like they were looking a little bland. Time for some details. I grabbed a stack of staples that I had lying around and carefully separated each staple with the blade. I then pushed each staple into the foam with a dot of glue to make rungs for a ladder. Another quick option to go up or down a level. I also still had a stock of barrels and boxes from previous projects, so I grabbed a few of these and gave them a base coat. And whilst this was drying, I took some air dry clay I had left over and used this to make some simple sandbag walls. Just sausages pressed flat and then cut into little pieces. These are by no means the best sandbags I've ever built, but they will more than do for this project. Once cured, I gave everything a liberal coat of Mod Podge to seal everything ready for paint. Again, in the spirit of multitasking, while letting one aspect dry, I started on dulling down my ladders. Some dirty paint water was all that was needed really to knock back the brightness on the staples. I will build this up in more detail, but for now it helps things move along. I added a bit more rubble to some of the areas of damage. I use a variety of small stones and sand to create a really natural looking rubble pile. I also went round with a small screwdriver and added some bullet holes in a few walls. A trace of some intense fighting from days gone by. And depending on the amount of pressure used, you can create all kinds of impacts. And no war exists without a decent dose of propaganda. So I went online and found some imperial posters and set these to print in a range of sizes and cut them out and pasted them around my walls. I also had a bunch of miniature barbed wire, again left over from a previous project, and added a few bits here and there. I started to add my sandbags to my no man's land. Just a little bit of glue to hold them in place, and I used the excess glue to sprinkle a bit of dirt down to blend the two elements together.
uh, add a bit more barbed wire and begin to build up some of the ground texture by adding some fine sand. These changes in colour and texture really help the scene feel more natural. I will probably paint over some of this but nonetheless the natural variation will still play its part as some of the colours will still show through. I added a few more barrels and boxes and bed these into my scene in the same way as before. A little glue and a mixture of dirt and sand. While going through some of my boxes of old miniature parts I also found some old rhino tracks. Perfect. A bit of battle debris that will work great. I also found a few old root boards that I'd saved. I cut a few twigs off these and used them to symbolise some previous life before the war took hold. I dug little troughs into the surface and then glued these into place. And hey presto, some battle damaged tree stubs were created. I added some primer to all the details. It's important that when you are using lots of different materials together that you prime before painting. This will give your paint a unified surface that will accept paint nicely. I continue to add some more barrels and boxes. I also knock back the shininess of the barbed wire. Again, just using an unclean primer brush to get some pigment on the wire. Next I had to face a task that I'd been putting off. So far my no man's land is essentially a rectangular slope and the edges won't really blend into the tabletop in the way that I'd like. I glued on a couple of offcuts to extend the footprint of the model and this also allowed me to create a downward slope which allowed me to solve the issue I was wrestling with. As all this was drying I added a bit of colour to my sandbags. Again nothing fancy, just trying to get all the separate elements to a similar place. Next I mixed up some textured paste with some sculptor moulds, some polyfiller, a bit of grout for hardness. And I added a bit of colour and spread this over the model to blend the edges together. I gave this a spritz of brown black primer and began to unify the surface. I laid out all the parts on the table and the reality of the scale of this project really hit me. Wow, I've really built a lot of trenches. The no man's land is still a completely different colour at this stage, but that's easily fixed with a bit more dirt. And as I mentioned earlier, with so many separate parts to this build, it's important to get to a stage where you can get a handle on it and begin working on the project as a whole and apply paint to the piece as an entirety to bring everything together. In all honesty, this project got completely out of hand and this type of project is the kind that could have easily been abandoned. But I wanted to see it through and see it completed. And I can rest assured that I have more than enough trenches to cover every variation I would ever need. You can let your mind run wild with all the fun scenarios you could create with a modular system like this. And if you did need something extra, something very specific, then you could just build that module and add it to your terrain set. If you have enjoyed this video and would like to see more like this, then please consider subscribing to stay up to date with all the latest videos. And hit the like button to let YouTube know you appreciate this kind of video. Thank you for joining me today and hopefully I have inspired you to try your own set of trenches. See you in the next video. Enjoy.